calls them, Pastor Hagen calls them, the Taylor girls. <laughs> wonderful time at Rama. Um, we've been learning a lot and just like as we've been there um, the Lord just kind of started to reveal some things to us and um, <clears throat> talk to us about our destiny, the things that we're supposed to do with our lives and um, really putting things on our heart um, and I don't know if any of you guys like I don't know this just like came to me a couple minutes ago I don't know if it, I don't know if any of y'all like read my note on Facebook about um, the purpose driven life and about how important um, that is and you know I kind of stole that name but here I go again <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, I did this to her once before with Dean Tad <laughs> um, but I did <laughs> anyway so um, just how how important it is to spend time in prayer and spend time talking to God about what you're supposed to do with your life um, because you know sometimes we get so just frustrated in our day-to-day -day things and we're just like oh my goodness like what how can God use me as a you know as a cashier how can God use that you know that's just something stupid you know all I do is ring up people and take money like what can God do with that and God can do a lot with that God can do a lot with that. Um, and, you know, there are things there are things that you learn in that job that maybe God has something for you 20 years down the road that you don't know about yet. And you're learning things in, the, in that position that you're going to use later down the road. And it's just very important not to get tired and not to get frustrated with where you are at that time. Because if you get frustrated, you get off track. You, you forget about the important thing. The important reason that you're here is for the lost. The reason you are here, the reason you are a Christian, is to help fulfill God's plan in this world. So if, you, if you're standing there and someone's having a bad day and you're waiting on someone, and, and, and maybe you just like give them a word of encouragement, and that can open a door. That can open, that can plant seed. And you know what? Maybe you aren't the one who helps to harvest that seed, but someone else will. And you'll get a reward in that. Do, just be faithful. Do what you're supposed to do. And if you don't know, say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Jesus told you specifically what you're supposed to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's what you're supposed to do. So, and that doesn't, you know, just because, you know, I'm not going to Africa. Who cares? Your neighborhood is the world. Your next door neighbor is the world. Where, you're, where you work, your job place, that is the world. Do what you're supposed to do in there. You can be a light to those people. You, now, don't be weird. Don't go crazy. Just be, don't, don't, don't. Oh, sha la la ha. You know, just, people don't think you're weird. Just, just be normal. Pray, you know what? It, you can say praise the Lord. That's okay. But you don't have to be weird. Just be a light. Be normal. Show Jesus to them. If they're having a bad day, love on them. It, that's all they want. They just want someone to listen. Just, just show the love of God to them. Be a light to the world. Be the salt to the world. Then I'm taking what you're supposed to be talking about. But I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, just be faithful. Be faithful. If you are faithful and if you're willing, he can use that. He needs a willing heart. And just just be faithful. Do what you're supposed to do. And you know what? You may be doing it for 30 years, but some people start their ministry 30 years later, you know? 30 years after they've retired, and they're like, oh, I'm retired. I'm going to kick back, and I'm going to just relax the rest of my life. Uh-uh, God's got more than that for you. You have more to do than just sit there and just relax for the rest of your life. God's got plans for you. But... Smith Wigglesworth, thank you, yes. Smith Wigglesworth, how old was he, like, in his 60s before, yeah, before he started his ministry, and look what he did for the God, okay? So just because you think, um, 
I've got these gray hairs. Oh, I just want to sit down and watch my TV and watch my, my games. No, 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 no. You can watch your games. That's cool. That's cool. But go and do something for God. There's more, there's more to life than just you. You've got to go and do. Go preach. If, if, you, if you think that, you know, oh, I've retired and I have nothing else to do with my life, go volunteer somewhere. Get out there. Go, go tell people about Jesus. Go. Go tell. Be faithful. He will use you if you're faithful. Faithful. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I know, I thought she was going to preach my whole sermon. <laughs> okay, so um, just over the past, I guess since I moved out to Rama, there's just been a um, drop on my heart. Something just dropped on my heart, but it's progressed the past few weeks just about God's number one interest and how it should be our number one interest. And I don't know if any of you saw a few weeks ago, or actually it was a week ago, um, I made a Facebook post. And the reason I did this is because a friend of mine that I knew back in college, he called me on his birthday night and he was completely wasted. And it just, it just hurt me on the inside to think of people. There's so many people out there who have no purpose to life. They're searching, they're grabbing for love, they're grabbing for any form of affection or any form of purpose to life, and they just live in a completely, just a cycle of doing the same things and there being no purpose to it and feeling completely lost. And it just began to burn on the inside of me and I posted that the main issue that I have with a lot of like the hyper, you know, doctrines, the hyper grace, hyper faith, hyper prosperity doctrines, is that they're all from a state of selfishness, a mindset of me, 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 and being right. When really our main goal as Christians should be to reach the lost and to pull people out of the world and bring them to an encounter of the love of Christ that transforms their life and then all the other things will be added unto us. And our number one interest should be the same as God's number one interest, which has always been for humanity. God, and God's just really been pressing this on my heart, just about we need to get um, focused um, because so many of us get focused on our own lives and on faith being for us for no more and grace has secured me in salvation and that's all there is to life. I don't have to do anything else. When there are so many people out there that are hurting and, and they're dying and going to hell because we don't care, as it seems. It seems that so many in the church world don't care. They just want to focus on their own lives. So that's what... I'm going to be talking about today is the lost, the number one interest of the Father. And, um, you know, Doug Jones has also been talking along these lines. He took a class and talked about it and just like stirred even more on the inside of me. But, um, if we aren't careful as believers, we're going to become more concerned with the outward appearance or condition of the man rather than the inward condition. Paul said it's in 1 Corinthians 5 that it was better for the man to be turned over to the destruction of the flesh so that in the end his soul might, his spirit could be saved. You know, he was concerned with more with the inward than the outward. And that's how we need to be. You know, the father is so concerned about the loss that he gave his only son. The number one interest of the father, the lost, cost him his number one love, which was Christ, the son. In Romans 8, 32... It says, he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Romans 5.10 says, for if, we, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin, dominion through his res resurrection life. 
Now the other person that is concerned or individual concerned with the lost is Jesus. Jesus was so interested in the lost that he willingly gave his life for humanity. In Luke 19.10, it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. In Matthew 20, 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And then in John 10, 18, he said, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received from my Father. And then, you know, so many people say, well, Jesus was murdered by the Jews and all this kind of stuff. But he willingly gave his life. You know, he had an, a, an option. Um, and in Matthew 26, he talks about that. In 53 through 56, he says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? In the same hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, Are you come against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold of me. But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then in Acts 1, 7, and 8, he, um, this is when he commissions them to, um, he says, it is not the time for you to know, it, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the world. And then in Matthew 9, 37 through 38, he says, Then saith he unto his disciples, The, tr the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You know, everything that the Father will ever ask you to do is to empower you to reach the lost. You know, hallelujah. Everything he will ask you to do is to make you a better witness to the world because he's concerned about the lost. And, um, Doug Jones said something that was really good. He said, the number one thing that keeps people from being concerned about sharing their faith is their flesh. And he talked about it happened to Jesus in the garden. You know, he said, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Because his flesh didn't want to. But he put his flesh under and was willing to do that. And that's the number one reason people will back away from sharing their faith. Um... And the other individual that's concerned about the lost is the Holy Spirit. He's concerned about the lost. Back in Acts 1.8, it says, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and the uttermost parts of the earth. The Holy Spirit is concerned about the lost. And that's the whole reason for him, is for him to come upon us, to empower us to be witnesses to the world. The angels are interested in the lost. In Luke 1510 it says likewise I say unto you there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repenteth J.B. Phillips translation says I tell you it is the same in heaven there is rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner whose heart is changed and then the message says count on it that's the kind of party God's angels throw every time one lost soul turns to God and then the the devil is interested in the lost. In 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. He uses deception to blind people, to blind the lost, because he wants to keep them for his own. And the first thing that truth is going to set you free from is untruth. Amen. Hallelujah. So we've got to preach the truth to the world to set them free. Now there's two groups left after all those other groups. The first one is the lost in hell. And let's see, let's go to Luke 16, 19 through, through 31. Okay. 
And I'm going to be reading from the Amplified, just because that's what I have with me. But it says, there was a certain rich man who habitually clothed himself in purple and fine linen and reveled and feasted and made merry in splendor every day. And at his gate was a carelessly dropped down and left a certain utterly destitute man named Lazarus, reduced to begging alms and covered with ulcerated sores. He eagerly decided to be satisfied with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs even came and licked his sores. And it occurred that the man, reduced to begging, died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, the realm of the dead, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, Abraham, have pity and mercy on me, and Lazarus, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime fully received what is due you in comforts and delights, and Lazarus in like manner the discomforts and distresses. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who want to pass from this place to you may not be able, and no one may pass from there to us. And the man said, Then, Father, I beseech you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may give solemn testimony and warn them, lest they to come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear and listen to them. But he answered, no, Father Abraham, if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent, change their minds for the better, and heartily amend their ways with abhorrence to their past sins. And he said to them, if they do not hear and listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded and convinced and believe even if someone should rise from the dead. So the lost in hell, their first thing that they're concerned about is themselves, because he said, quench my tongue. You know, it was all my, me, me, I, but you got to hand it to them. They are concerned about the lost on earth because he was begging for Lazarus to be sent back to tell his, his family about the place of torment that he was in. And then the last group in relation to the lost is us. <laughs> We're the only group left, and it seems in the church we're the only group that doesn't care. All the other ones care at some degree. Even the lost in hell care a little bit about the lost on the earth. And the primary reason that the church is not interested is immaturity. It's from a state of selfishness and being focused on me and not realizing the calling and the purpose for faith and the purpose of grace is to extend it to those around us. Hallelujah, man. That's the whole reason that we're here. If the, if 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 the purpose of life was just to be saved by grace and that was it, we may as well pack up and move on up to heaven because there's nothing else left for us here. You know, we're just taking up space and air. But there's so much more that we're called to. We're called to be a light. We're called to, to save people from that torment and that anguish in hell. That's our purpose. And we need a reality check as a church to get on track with God's number one one interest and to line up our heartbeat with his heartbeat. His heart beats for the loss. Our heart should beat also for the loss. You know, I was, as I was studying, I came across some really awesome quotes from some really old, you know, evangelists and preachers from centuries ago that just stirred even more along this. And I was like, this is what we need in the church today. We need people who think this way. One of them said, some wish to live within the sound of a church or chapel bell. I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. 
<laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Charles Spurgeon said, if sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our bodies. If they will perish, let them perish with our arms about their knees. Let no one go there unwarned or unprayed for. And then, let's see... This one, not called, did you say? Not heard the call, I think you should say. Put your ear down to the Bible and hear him bid you go and pull sinners out of the fire of sin. Put your ear down to the burdened, agonized heart of humanity and listen to its pitiful wail for help. Go stand by the gates of hell and hear the damned entreat you to go to their father's houses and bid their brothers and sister and servants and master not to come there. Then look Christ in the face whose mercy you have professed to obey and tell him whether you will join heart and soul and body and circumstances in the march to publish his mercy to the world. And, and then let's see, there's one more. I care not where or how I live or what hardships I go through so that I can but gain souls to Christ. Amen. There's so many people that today that just don't have a heart for the lost. And we as a church need to get on track and on focus. And that needs to be the cry of our heart. Um, Let's see. You know, there's just, it's just so much more. It, I want to cry when I think about all the people that are lost. You know, and um, Mama Cindy, Cindy Duvall, it, when we've been over at her house, that's like what she's been just in tears. She'll, we'll just be talking about stuff, and then she'll go, oh, the lost. There's so many lost people. And, you know, she just starts weeping because that's what our heart needs to be. We need to be like that. We're just walking around our house doing dishes or whatever, and we just want to fall to our knees and weep for the lost, for God to send laborers across their path. You know, that's what we need to be praying for. God, make me a laborer, hallelujah, and send laborers across the lost path. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think that's it. <laughs> 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 You don't have to stop so abruptly. Well, <laughs> I just, Hallelujah. I didn't end of words, but. Yeah. I just put my notes away. Jane said, you probably ought to have some notes just in case they, take, they don't go you know, so long. Well. I'm my father's child. She's her father's child. <laughs> Shannon's out here. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Then she takes over and goes, you know. <coughs> That's her mama. I don't know what that, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can sit down. Okay. Don't, don't get up tight. They do this at Rama. I'm going to have to get into the groove of things, start bringing iPhones to the podium. Pastor, yeah. I, Pastor uses an iPad. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I want an iPad. Okay. Just in case y'all wanted what to get me for Christmas, I'd love to have an iPad. <coughs> Two 64 gigabyte, 3G. <laughs> Just say it. So, next month, taking it, the streets will return. Needless to say, I, as she was sitting there quoting one of those quotes, I thought, man, it'd be nice just to stencil one of those quotes right by the door on the back wall. You know, so then on your way out, you got you to read that. You know, I, I like the one about if they're going to go to hell, let them leap over our bodies and when it's hanging on to their knees, you know, making sure I like that. You know, praise the Lord. Where'd you find those? Tony Cook's website? Yeah, I thought so. It's not like a bunch of lists of stuff from Tony Cook's website. That, guy, that guy's like a collection of all kinds of stuff. Hallelujah. Would well, you enjoy the girls sharing and letting you? Did y'all really enjoy it? Give them some love. Give up the love. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Yeah, um, uh, the girls came up, the pastor and, uh, they, and, and Tony, on the way out, and Tony Cook was there with him, his wife. And, um, and um, you know, they go, they, Tony, he goes, Tony, these are, these are uh, the Taylor girls. Uh, 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 they're Ed Taylor's daughters. <laughs> he couldn't think of their first names. And Tony goes, I know them, I know them. He said, which one of y'all did I comment on your post? Because when Jesse put the post about, you know, hyper grace, hyper faith, hyper prosperity, the, the loss of things, he put on there that was uh, something, something about being very well stated, and that was 
Um, it's really good. So he turned to the pastor and said, did you see her post the other day? He said, no. He said, he said you need to preach on that. <laughs> <laughs> so he had found out what date it was. So, you know, look, we, we, need to, we can't ever. And that, that has always been one of the drawbacks in, in teaching people how to live in, by faith, how to live victoriously, how to live under the blessings of God. Uh, oftentimes, people gravitate to what's in it for me and forget the reason we live by faith and forget the reason we live under grace and forget the reason that God establishes his covenant of prosperity with us and that is to reach the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I'm going to tell you something. Remember this. Everything you possess and everything you gain on this side of heaven that's in the natural will be burned up. The treasures. Jesus said lay treasures up in heaven. Who are those treasures? Those treasures are people. Those treasures are people. And we lay them, store them up in heaven. Oh, my. Oh, my. Praise God. So, uh, as we go through this, this Christmas season, Remember to be the light of the world to lost and hurting people and share Jesus with them. Remind them that the baby is no longer a baby in the manger. The child grew up, died on a cross and shed his blood and became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Before, before we close and then receive an offering for the girls. Um, anybody here this morning that you don't know the Jesus we're talking about. You haven't come into the family of God. You know, uh, people join churches. They sign roll books. They're water baptized. They have first communion. They shake the preacher's hand. They, ha you know, sign up for the Sunday school. Get in some type of focus group at a church. None of that is what we're talking about. Have you ever been born again? Have you ever had a personal experience with Jesus Christ through the new birth where you said, Jesus, come into my heart? Now, listen, there's a lot of ways you say this. I know that Romans says that, you know, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God's raised from the dead, you'll be saved. But if you've never asked him into your heart, if you've never said, you know, save me, you've never made the confession of receiving him as your Lord, you can today. You don't have to go another day without knowing Jesus Christ. You don't have to know another, you have to go another day without knowing and having assurance of your salvation. You can know that you're born again. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to hope when he comes back, you get in. You can punch your ticket today. Amen. Anybody here that you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, would you raise your hand? Anyone? Okay. Anybody here, you're backslidden. Now, we get real cute in the church. We say, you know, broken fellowship. You know, we're, we're out of fellowship with God. Now, backslidden. You're just not serving God like you're supposed to. You know it. Your friends know it. Everybody around you know it. And he said he'll heal your backsliding. Just like the prodigal son, he'll restore you back into that place of fellowship with him. Anybody here today, that, that's you. All right. Praise God. We didn't want anybody going through. We didn't want to leave you, run you out the door today and have you spend the rest of your Christmas time not knowing if you're right with God. Amen.